Okay, now moving to the family Neceriaceae. These are the gram-negative cocci, and they live in the mucous membranes of warm-blooded animals. Now, Cyria is a genera, as well as Bronhamella and Moxarella. And there's two primary human pathogens, Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitidis. Now, looking at Neisseria, these are gram-negative, they're bean-shaped, diplococci. They don't have flagella or spores. They do have capsules and pili. They are strict parasites. They don't live long outside of the host. They're either aerobic or microaerophilic. They produce catalase and cytochrome oxidase. Diplococcus. Now, Neisseria gonorrhea, we're just going to call it gonorrhea, an STD. Um, it has fimbriae and other surface molecules for attachment to slow phagocytosis, and it also has the IgA protease that will um, cleave or, or break the secretory IgA. It's strictly a human pathogen. It's one of the top five STDs. Um, it doesn't survive more than one to two hours on fomites. And here you can see the rates reported each year in the United States from 1941 to 2011. It says 2014, but I only see to 2011. But I understand from what I'm reading now that the numbers are going back up. But you can see in the um, 70s and 80s, it was extremely high. Now, in a male, it causes urethritis, a yellowish discharge with scarring and infertility. 10% of males have no symptoms. They're asymptomatic. In the female, vaginitis, urethritis, and salpingitis, or PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, can cause abdominal infections. It's a cause of ectopic tubal pregnancies and sterility. 50% of females are asymptomatic. Some other things that can cause problems, anal intercourse, uh, can lead to proctitis and oral sex can cause pharyngitis and gingivitis if they have a gonococcal infection. Careless personal hygiene can cause the eyes to become infected and you get uh, conjunctivitis. Sometimes it enters the bloodstream and it goes to your joints and skin causing chronic arthritis and rashes and sometimes even meningitis and endocarditis. In children, if they're born infected, then they got it as they pass through the birth canal. It can cause eye inflammation, even blindness. Their respiratory tract and pharynx can be in, affected by it. So they're going to have to get prophylactic treatments immediately at birth. And if they have it as a child, there's evidence that they've been sexually abused by infected adults. For the Neisseria meningitis, the virulence factors are the capsule, the adhesive fimbriae, the IgA protease, and the endotoxins. There are 12 strains, and it's a prevalent cause of meningitis. Humans are the reservoir. It lives in the nosopharynx. 3 to 30% of the adult population have it. Um, people that are high risk, that live in close quarters, um, children up from six months to three years, and then from 10 years to 20 years are at high risk. 
um, what happens is the bacteria enters the bloodstream and it crosses the blood-brain barrier and it permeates the meninges and grows in the cerebrospinal fluid. So the, it's a very rapid onsi onset with um, neurological symptoms. It's going to release endotoxins when you have meningococcemia and it can cause hemorrhage, coagulation, and vascular damage. It can cause necrosis of tissues, especially in your extremities. And you can have petechiae that develop on the trunk and appendages in over half the cases. It's treated with IV penicillin G and cephalosporin. And anybody that's in contact with somebody that has it is going to get prophylactic treatment. A common cause of men meningitis in young adults is found in the genus Neisseria. 